Mar, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Tamara G. Don't forget, you can check us out on all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at City of Miramar. That's M-I-R-A-M-A-R. I've been spelling it for years now. <laughs> and with me uh, from the City of Miramar, we know it's right here in Miramar, is Director Katrina Davenport, Director of Community Services for the City. So welcome to the show, Director Davenport. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and thank you so much for having me here. Not a problem, not a problem. Listen, we know that you busy any time of the year uh, because you deal mainly with our seniors and, and with our community services, uh, but how have things been for you now that this COVID thing is is becoming our new normal? So one of the things that was um, an interesting experience is how our team arose to the occasion. Because what we had to do is we had to reimagine engagement. The seniors are no longer coming to the senior center as of March of last year. However, there are many services that we provide that are essential to their well-being, their overall health, and more importantly, to make sure that they are receiving the nutrition that they need. So what we've done is we are delivering on a weekly basis. We're delivering home um, frozen meals. They get a seven-day supply. Um, we also do a hot meal delivery in conjunction with our um, cultural affairs department, um, and that's delivered on Fridays to many seniors in the community. We also are continuing with our um, counseling. Uh, we do still provide caregiver support for our caregivers, for our clients from the adult daycare. Um, so what we just really tried to do is find a way to make sure we can keep the seniors as connected as possible. Um, the list is really long. We have um, an ambassadorship program that has two different functions. One is for peer-to-peer -peer contact, where we have some of our more um, vibrant seniors who are out there calling their peers and just checking in to make sure everybody's doing okay. And now that we've rolled out vaccines, there's a whole other exciting thing happening where we're having the seniors who've been vaccinated also kind of advocating so that we can get seniors who may be a little unsure and not really um, comfortable with the idea to see that it's really important that they do this. And so that's something that we'll be kicking off as well. Uh, Director Davenport, you mentioned how there are some seniors who are mobile and able to get up and go and do things. And then, of course, there are the ones that are not. Um, I can say just from years of knowing you, what the Community Services Department has been doing, our seniors are very involved in the city of Miramar. They're not going to just sit back. You know, they're so used to uh, being involved. And I'm glad that you guys are doing this. Um, you mentioned counseling services. How has that been for them? Because this has got to be different from anything that they've ever seen as well. So one of the things that the Senior Center, our, our main um, mandate, is really to fight the isolation that comes along with aging. Because as you age, the changes that take place are just physical. You may be no longer to, um, able to drive, or you may no longer be able to, your mobility has been impacted in a way that you can't really get around as well. So what the Senior Center did was it provided a place for them to come and just commute, right? So with that being taken away from them, um, luckily our funder, along with the, the um, Department of Elder Affairs, Secretary Prudham, who's amazing, they came up with something that we can do and um, it's called reassurance phone calls. So what we do on a, on a weekly basis is our seniors who are members of our center, they are contacted every single solitary week by a dedicated staff person to talk about their well-being, their needs, um, any unmet needs, but more importantly, just to have that connection so that they have somebody to talk to and to who's checking in on them to make sure that they have everything that they need. So the reassurance phone calls are probably one of the, the most important um, uh, tools that we have right now because that's a way for us to connect with them and really get an idea of how they're doing. Because of the fact these calls have been going on going for almost a year now, um, on a weekly basis, the um, the level of interaction and trust that has been built because it's the same person that calls them on a regular basis, we are actually in a position now where the information that they share with us is very meaningful, and we really can kind of get a pulse of how they're doing. So um, that's one of the ways we've tried to keep them as engaged as possible. Um, hopefully soon we'll be able to um, bring them back to some activities, maybe outdoors, where they can get some exercise and just see each other again. Um, mm -hmm. We've had a couple of vaccination clinics over the last um, couple of weekends at two um, faith-based organizations. One was in Opalaka, um, and then we just this past weekend in the city of Miramar. 
and just to see how happy they were to see each other when the bus picked them up to take them for the vaccine. So they really are um, missing that connection um, of you know face-to-face interaction. Right. If you're just tuning to Good Morning Miramar, welcome to the show. And we're speaking with Director Katrina Davenport. She is the Director of Community Services for the City of Miramar, uh, dealing with the seniors, but also other uh, aspects of our community as well in Miramar. And one of the things about the seniors, we've been talking about how active they are, and, and they are a group that is so used to doing things. I mean, they always have a Valentine's dance. Um, you guys always would do a, a, a Christmas party, a Thanksgiving dinner, um, you know, Mother's Day and Father's Day events. How obviously that has changed, but you just mentioned that maybe the city will start doing some things that they can come back to. That's correct. So in spite of the fact that we don't have that uh, opportunity to get together and have all those great activities that you just mentioned, we have found ways that we are sending things home to them when we do the weekly deliveries for, of their food. Um, we've sent recreation packets so that they can, you know, do puzzles and word searches and the different types of things that they're interested in doing. Um, ideally, we can get things back to whatever our new normal is going to look like, maybe in March. Um, in the meantime, I think it's very important, though, that we continue to be vigilant and understand that seniors as the most vulnerable population, especially when it comes to COVID-19, that their health and well-being, first and foremost, is at the top of the list. And we can't really rush back at this time. Um, I would love to, to tell them all that, yeah, we're coming back on X date, but unfortunately, we're just not really there yet. Right. We just need to get people vaccinated. We need to keep masking. We need to keep social distancing. And we continue to look for new ways to re-engage the seniors um, so that they don't feel the isolation that unfortunately comes along with being you know, stuck at home. Right. And, you know, again, we mentioned how there's just so active. You guys, you know, get the bus and you take them uh, to many of the events that happen in Miramar. You know, if it's Black History, if it's the city's birthday. Um, if it's uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, the festival that we normally have, if it's Halloween, you know, they're they're just so used to always being on the go with the city. So this is definitely different for them. How has it been for your staff? Because uh, are you all back into the office every day or did you never leave the office because of what you do? So um, I think initially, like, like most departments, we were home. However, um, We've been in the office on a regular basis now for many months um, because there's just certain things that are just required in order for us to provide the best level of service that we can. Um, staff is amazing. I've always said community services is the best team that there is um, in spite of the length of this um, pandemic and the level of effort that it requires on a daily basis. Staff mm -hmm. is still so incredibly committed to our seniors and making sure that this experience of being home is um, impact them in a way that gets more positive than negative. Um, we do have the benefit that of some different programs that utilize technology. Um, one of them is called IN2L, which stands for it's never too late. Um, tablets are provided to homes that have caregivers, so there are some opportunities for them to do different kinds of activities to really target their cognitive ability and keep them as fresh as possible. Mm -hmm. There's another we'll be kicking off soon called Unipur, which is going to utilize um, the television. Um, there'll be content where they can play games and do exercises. So there's another pilot that's going to be rolling out really soon. So like I said, we've done a lot of work to try and just reimagine engagement so that in spite of the fact that they're still at home, they still have an opportunity to um, be engaged. Staff is um, just committed to make sure that our seniors, you know, we love them. So yeah. it's just the only thing that's important is that we take care of them. Right. And you mentioned earlier about the meal program that you have for uh, the mere members. Again, I don't think many people realize that besides the social aspect of it, um, a lot of our seniors are not able or to afford or to even uh, make dinner and make meals for themselves. So it's very important that the city continues uh, what they're doing to help them. Absolutely. So at this time, we have probably um, delivered in excess of uh, 35,000 meals. Um, we've made in excess of 15,000 phone calls. Um, the number of ways that we found to engage 
um, are just integral to making sure that in spite of the fact that they don't have live interaction with um, other people, that they are still connecting on a regular basis with other people to, you know, and, and to maintain their well-being. Because unfortunately, isolation, the um, health impact, it, depression, um, even keeping the med compliant while they're not in our uh, center on a regular basis, making sure that you know they're still taking your medication. So those are the kinds of conversations that we're having with them to make sure that they're doing the best they can to take care of themselves. That's amazing. So where can people find more information about the wonderful programs that the uh, community service department has for the city of Miramar? So I do want to talk about one more thing that we're doing in conjunction oh. with our fire department. Okay. Um, I didn't forget it, but I just didn't didn't want to leave this out. Um, we we're actually doing in-home COVID testing for seniors who are unable to get to a testing site. Um, there's been a hotline set up. We call it the Senior COVID Hotline. That okay. number is 954-883-5221. When you call that number, you can either request a in-home COVID test. And our wonderful um, Myanmar's Fine Fire Department will um, schedule an appointment and come to your home and do an in-home test for you. If you call that number, I'm going to repeat it, 954-883-5231. You can also request to be put on a list in the event that you're interested in having a vaccine. We, you know, They're not very abundant right now. However, um, we are collecting the names of those who are interested. So when the opportunity presents itself, we're able to make sure that we get those shots into the arms of those that want it. So um, as far as if you're interested in becoming a member of this wonderful senior center, <laughs> you can be sent at 954-889-2719. Again, that's and when you say, I'm sorry, go ahead, director. Go ahead. I was going to say, just repeat the number, 954-889-2719. Perfect. Um, the question that I wanted to ask is, when we say seniors in the city of Miramar, what age are we talking? because everybody has a different <laughs> definition. Absolutely. So in order to participate in most of the programs, you have to be 60 years of age or older. For the in-home COVID testing, um, you have to have Medicare, which means you're probably 65 or older. However, we are still able to um, help you navigate the system to have a COVID test and we will transport you once you become a member, a free a member of our center, which is a free membership. So. If you're 60 and over, we'll make sure you're connected with the services that you need. All right. Sounds good. So again, if you are interested in that in-home COVID test, 954-883-5221. 954-883-5221. Or if you want more information about the Community Services Department at the City of Miramar, you can call 954 889 2719 889 2719 or you can always go to our website miramarfl.gov that's m i r a m a r miramarfl.gov thank you so very much director katrina davenport uh, she is the director of community services for the city of miramar certainly appreciate you being with us today and also giving us all this great information uh, for the things that the city has done and will continue to do for our senior population so thank you very much thank you for the opportunity and mask up everyone <laughs> that's right put that mask on <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us thank you for watching good morning miramar until next time